Good afternoon. You're very welcome along to Hennessy Memorial Town Malby for the first county senior football championship tie outside of Innes as the Magpies of the North in this time meet the Magpies of the West doing big in this 2020 opener. Having not clashed in the championship since 2014, these sides now meet in the opening round for the second successive season, with Ennis Diamond eventually coming out on top in last year's version by 111 to 18. And to help distract you from the my monotonous drones, I have Derek Dormer here for company this afternoon. Derek, I suppose a real tough one to call. Both sides finished in the, the knockout stages last year. Yeah, look, it, it is going to be very hard to call. I was covering the game last year, and Steinman started a lot better than Dunbeg. And if Dunbeg are to prevail today, I think they will need to start fast. And Steinman, notoriously well known for fast starting, and that will have an, an awful bearing on the outcome today. Yeah, we don't have a fast start because uh, there's a lot of changes to the teams. Um, we'll start with Ennis Diamond. In goals, it's number one, Shane Keane. Number two, Derek Keneally. Number three is Sean O'Driscoll. Number four, Adam Ralph. And from now on, it gets a bit complicated. Wing back is number 25, David McNamara. Number 11, Killian Rowine is at six. Tiernan Hogan is uh, wing back. And the midfield pairing of Cahill Malone and... Um, Carl Malone and uh, Kevin Hauer and then in the half forward line we have uh, Sean Ryan, Owen Ryan, uh, Ryan Barry and in the full forward line we have uh, David Fitzgerald is at full forward, Michael McDonough is in the corner and uh, the other corner is uh, number 24 which is Matty Kinch and for Doombeg a little less complicated but in number one is Eamon Tuberty a full back line of James Killeen Kevin Pender is out so in his place is number 19 Owen Conway in the other corner is Joe Blake a half back line of Parker Horn Ty Lillis and Sean Conway Ronan Good is at midfield and he's partnered by Michael Tuberty in the half hour line we have Kyle Killeen number 17 Paul Dillon number 11 and Brian Egan number 15 and in the full forward line we have Owen Tuberty Cullum Dillon and David Tuberty. One minute and not a lot. A bit complicated there on the <laughs> side of the team. A lot of, a lot of uh, lines going through that one. These dummy teams are something they hold on. Yeah. Uh, so just to clarify there, it's actually uh, number 23, Matty Finch, that is in midfield with Matty Kinch that's in midfield with Cahill Malone. And we're about to get started here, or at least we're about to get the uh, national anthems underway. Uh, doing beggar in a huddle. Getting stuck for this one. They're the same colours, but no jersey clash. Thankfully, Derek uh, Cannon's Mills in Bradford last weekend had to. Some had to switch, but uh, I no such might have done skins and shorts last week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think anyone needs to see that. <laughs> Not even the lack of support here. Um, but we're about to get going here, and we're set for the national anthem. Just to the finish are on the main. for one of the final ties of the open weekend of the senior football championship and there's a losers group there that nobody wants to be in so this is must win territory for these two teams of course Ennis Diamond getting to the final in 2018 and Dunbeg were the last champions outside of Kilmurray Brecon, Cracklaw and St Joseph's Milltown they won it in 2010 they'll be hoping to do the same 10 years later and the referee for today is Wayne King from St Joseph's Dora Barefield and it's in a diamond that have the prevailing strong breeze that blows through the town here in Milltown for the opening half. 
conditions are good today on for I'm expecting a good game of football. Yeah, just on the field there, the grass is cut very low. It's not really football in grass. It's more more hurling uh, grass. And we did have a county You're final up here. You're expecting a big game from David Fitzgerald. So <laughs> <laughs> well, he is at position at full forward here today. So that's a big uh, change for, for Ennis Diamond. We'll see how that one develops for them. But we're just waiting for the Doombeg subs to come back over here. Only a couple of loud in the line. Actually, only a few that are out in at all, really, in the, in the current circumstances. So Doombeg, as you said, champions in 2010. That was our first title since 2001. The two men wearing number 11 on are beginning to get to know each other before the party. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You have Killian Ryan, who was the Clare Minor captain in 2018. He's facing Paul Dillon, an experienced one. So... Wayne King is happy that everyone is in their place. And we're about to get going here in Milltown for the penultimate tie in this opening round. And it's in. Up they go, and it's Cotton Malone that gets into possession. Feeding that ball right out the wing. And it's on Ryan. Get down. Great ball, gets it back. Shot from Sean Ryan. But unfortunately, that's just tailed to the left and wide. As you say, Ennis Diamond having a strong breeze here. So imperative, really, that they manage to build up a big lead here at half time. Showing their intent from the off one, three quick passes and a pop of goal. Yeah, they want to make it. 30 seconds. They made an impressive start, as you said, to last year's game. They were seven points to two up and still held that five point lead at the break. So they'll be home for something similar here, you'd imagine. That ball is perfectly kicked out by Eamon Tuberley and it finds Michael Tuberley. Plays it back to the experienced Parker Horn. They're about yet to get going here. There's Ronan Good. Positioned at midfield, even though he's named at wing forward, but it means that David Tuberley, as expected, is a lot closer to the goal, and that's where they want him. And here he is on the ball. He's been tightly marked by Dara Keneally. Dara was a minor for Clare last year and was on the under-20 team that played here actually against Cork in the Munster under-20 semi-final. Great smothering there by Dean Bay. Great yeah. smothering. But it does cough up a free and that's food and drink for the likes of David Tuberley. Great work by the Dean Bay forwards. So we wouldn't allow Keneally out with the ball. Pressed high up the field. They'll have to maintain that today. And here he is, David Tuberley. I won't put the commentator's course now on, but I'd expect him to knock this off. Yeah. <laughs> a bit of ring rust this, you just never know, but... There's no rust when it comes to David Tuggery. Totally that's true. Either foot. And he does and put it wide. And commentator's course on. Yeah. Not the... Not to start the doom big would have liked in a rare opportunity against that 11 breeze. And 11 on. Yeah, <laughs> you, you did note it before the, yeah. the throw on, I suppose, Derek. There's, there's, there's a bit of argy bargy going on. No harm in the championship game. Paul Dillon against Killian Rewine. Wayne King was right on the spot there, too. Yeah, he didn't show the, no. the, the cliched two yellows. No, no, no. <laughs> Just give him a little word. Yeah, he kicked out. Perfectly knocked down by Ronan Good, but it's in his time to get the ball. And it's Owen Ryan again. He plays the ball in towards the square. That's comfortably dealt with. Ronan Good in possession. Now, just need to be patient here. Oh, Conway just manages to get himself out of trouble. Keen O'Mahony. Wasn't the sort of pass that Ryan Barry, Ryan Barry would try on one because a bit high into the fullback. Line. Absolutely. And now Doombeg finally get themselves out of trouble. And it's their vice captain, Michael Tuberley, to get some underway. Paul Dillon. And back to Michael Tuberley. Just looking to assess his options, but he's, they're staying a bit lateral at the moment. And now Brian Egan. Back to Ronan Good. To be happy enough to keep possession here. They're against a the strong breeze. And they fight, actually, Brian Egan fires it in towards Colin Dillon, who just slipped. Shane Keane dealing with it and manages to find a teammate. And that is Killian Rewine. He plays it to Kevin Hare. And Kevin 
using all these experience to get it to vote. And here goes Hare. Oh, and he just managed to find the ball inside. Sean Ryan has a look, but too big. Again, snuff out the danger. It's great work by Ty Gillis there, just to get a little tap in on the ball. Definitely another clear under 20s from this year. And he's in a half back line with Sean Conway as well. A very youthful looking full back, or half back line when you consider that Park Horn really brings the average age up there. And here is Park Horn on the ball. He's playing out to a bit of space. There's plenty of space here. And here goes Ronan Good. He's dispossessed. Tim Beg managed to get the ball and he's got an advantage, it seems, but. Wayne King starts the ball. I think he's only stopping it for you know, attention to the player. I, don't, I didn't see an infringement there on that one. It's 50 50, you know? Yeah, both players committed to the tackle, but going to be a bit of attention for Killian Rewine, and, and as Diamond won't want him to be on their injured list. As Diamond are going with four men up top one, which is, you know, that shows their intent. Yeah. The teams drop a lot more men behind the ball, but in this time, and have confidence in their forward line. Definitely. And they have two big men inside there in, in Michael McDonough and David Fitzgerald. Yet to get on the ball, but there is a bit of potency there if they can get the ball into him in time. And here is Killian Ryan. He's back up on his feet. He doesn't look any the worse for that uh, little bit of an injury. And it's Kevin Hare who plays it out here to the left wing. It's a ball Ryan Barry can try on now. Definitely. He just about keeps it in. They tackle. The crowd. It could be the first car calling for blood here already. It was Paul Lillen who's already been spoken to by Wayne King. The black card on. Black, uh, black card, and that's a huge blow for Doombeg, especially when they're against this breeze. Six minutes into the game, so he's going to miss the rest of this first quarter at least. Now, can Ennis Diamond prosper and take full advantage of that setback for Doombeg? 15 on 14, and they have a strong breeze at their back. It's Owen Ryan. It's a teasing ball across. That's Dave Fitzgerald on the end of it. But doing big again, and it's That's Owen Conway. Very, very well done there, Owen. Owen Conway winning the ball and winning the free. And again, they get themselves out of danger. Brian Egan plays out to Tuberly, who's had to come back. Had to come back to defend while now that they're down, down, they're down a man for the 10 minutes. And yeah, they've reverted to two men for the forward line. I'm sure they're going to put some men behind them. Instead of four mentioned Sean Conway on the ball, really good flowing player, can play either side of the field, but at today is named at wing back. And here's Michael Tuberley playing out to Park Horn. Now, can they look to build? They ha he hasn't many options. There are a few options in there for him. <laughs> Means that Ennis Diamond swallowed up. There was five unmarked defenders for Ennis Diamond there. Should be easy to build it out from here on. Definitely. And it's Kevin here on the ball. He's been very prominent in these early stages. Still looking for that first score, but. A lot of misplaced passes on. It must be just championship tension. And as you said earlier on, ring rustiness, really. You know? Yeah, a lot of teams didn't even get that first round of the, the QZ Cup before uh, the lockdown came in. Uh, so you're talking about last year's championship before they've had real uh, competitive action because normally you kind of ease into the, the Kizzy Cup as well. You can see it just everything's like a, a metre short in a hand pass or two metres long in a foot pass you know but there's no doubt in the intent on both sides you know it's, it's, it's a full-blooded championship encounter is the way to describe the opening few minutes. Definitely and with only eight minutes gone doing big will be much happier even though they're down a man because they haven't conceded against that, uh, with that, against that strong breeze that could be troublesome and as you said they had Slow start against Ennis Lyman last year, they were five points down. And in the semi final, they just didn't get it going for a while. They were 10 points down to Milltown before they finally rallied. And by God, did they rally to only lose by four in the end. That's Sean Conway with a free. And again, that's a wide for Doombeg. That's their second place ball that's gone wide. And you think against that breeze, they've got to take every opportunity. Those chances are vital, and especially as you said, against the breeze and a man down. You know, if them two frees were converted to Doombeg, it'd be. You know, two points to the good, and which would be huge in, in, in the day that's in it. Definitely. Now, and it's time it should have a spare man here for the kick out, but he's kicking it right into the mix. And it's Doombeg that win it, and it's Michael Tuberley. It looks like Doombeg have the extra man here around the middle. 
He gives it to David Tuberty. It's a lovely foot pass. Into Owen Tuberty. There's more Tuberty's you can shake and stick out here. He's inside. Good defending, but he's slightly held in the tackle. Yeah, Wayne King gave him the advantage, and in fairness, called it back when the advantage wasn't accruing. So surely now we'll have the opening <laughs> score. <laughs> oh no, we can't count those chickens just yet, Derek. Yeah. The angle is a bit kinder, I suppose, to, to David Tuberty, but they have missed two free so far. So seeing is believing. With we'll weightless, actually kicked over the bar. I won't put the commentators course the <laughs> no. saying nothing. We're just coming up to that tenth minute. Jim Beg will be the happier of the two. They're a man down, they're against the breeze, and they have the opening opportunity here for a score. And there was no way he was going to miss two free. Finally, there is that first score, and inevitably it's David Tuberley that gets Jim Beg off the mark in this year's senior championship. Interesting enough, Derek, in his time and won the, this contest last year, I managed to go on and beat Core Clare as well to top the group. But so Doombeg actually finished the further without winning a game in regulation time. Yeah, tourists, Worked that one out. <laughs> so started, but they drew against. He's a battle, they really come good. They drew against Core Clare to come out of the group on score difference. And you were at that epic. <laughs> yeah. Beat Air Rogue after extra time before just coming up short against Milton. But it's in his time, and he got to last year's quarter finals. <laughs> It's Cahill Malone into Cahill Rewain. He's fouled. Should be an equaliser here. He did very well because, in fairness, the pass was poor. He, he did well to pluck it there, take it down, win the free, and surely we'll have an equaliser. Yeah, Cahill Rewain <laughs> seems to be that man that they push forward now, knowing that Dunbeg have to go and defend. He's been pushed forward from his centre back berth, and uh, it's made the difference immediately. Immediately, yeah. He's a big unit. He is. I've never seen a small Rewain, have you? No. <laughs> And there it is, and Killian Rewine. Inside a minute on, they got the equaliser straight basically from the kickoff. Yeah, we're 11 minutes into the game, and it's one point apiece here. Both of them coming from freeze. David Tuberty's being cancelled out by Killian Rewine. So, let's see what Eamon Tuberty has in terms of options, because they are a man down. Everyone's man for man off the field here. But he's looked again for Michael Tuberley, who has been a good outlet for him. He's very close to the line, and in oh, fact... He made a 40-yard burst from one side of the field to the other for his goalkeeper there. He's very unlucky that his touch just left him down. He seems to be that link man that he's... that Eamon in, Tuberley is always looking for. Carl Malone breaks the line, it looks like. Robert Hart... Mistakes like spotting that, that straight away. It mightn't seem anything inconsequential at the moment, but a mistake like that is a complete turnover. You have a man up, you are with the breeze, you know, that's just a silly mistake. A throw in. Matty Kinch picks it out of the sky, gives it to Kevin Herr. Kevin Herr lofts the ball again in towards Dave Fitzgerald. Wasn't successful the first time, gets it the second time. Oh, it's off the post. Off the post and out. Very unlucky with that one. But can they get something out of this attack? And no, Michael McDonough has put that wide. Well, he doesn't think so. He doesn't think so. We've no Hawkeye here. There, no can we? Hawkeye here, but the referee is oh. overruling his umpire run. So Ennis Simon do get something out of that attack, and it's Michael McDonough that gets the score. But it could have been a goal. Did Fitzgerald did so well there. Did everything right. Plucked it from the clouds. Beat his man outside of the right boot. Off the post. Very unlucky that he didn't hit the back of the net. And uh, a let off for Dunby. Okay, so we're back in play. It's two points to one Dennis Diamond. They're looking for a ball. That's the, the hold up here. Eamon Tuberty's not happy with that one. He looks to the ball boy for another one. This time. Here he goes again. This time it's David Tuberty that's the outlet and a perfect catch and a mark. Now, can he get something going for Doombeg? Immediately feeds Michael Tuberty. And off he goes. There's a bit of space there in the centre. Oh, but that's not it's the good options pass. inside for him. Only two men to aim for, you know. Adam Ralph, Matty Kinch gets the advantage. It's Carl Malone that feeds it out. And now it's Killing Rewine again. He plays into space. That's a lot for Ryan Barry to do. And it's Keno Mahoney that. Wasn't he's fast now, but I don't think you saying balls would have caught that. 
Keno Manny that wasn't named in the starting team but did start the game is he the trade secret that could be the difference for Dunbeg Dunbeg happy to pass around their own full back line they do have options here but you don't want to be dilly dallying the ball too much and it's back to where it started not sure he's going to go back again or he is, switch it out to this side here there's no any spaces on the far side there are no rush here they're, they're waiting for that man to come back on Paul Dillon still has roughly about two minutes before he's back in the field and they haven't inflicted much damage since in this diamond and now we go again Ronan Good just coming up to the halfway line and he gives it off to David Hoverley he's a bit to do there but Beverly gets on that ball and gives it off to Sean Conway Sean Conway on that left wing cuts inside he's Ronan Good gives it back to Michael Tuberley Brian Egan Michael Tuberley again Tuberley now they're inside the 45 will he have a go he's made the angle awful tight for himself Brian Egan again puts that one across Cullum Dillon is there he does catch it what can he do gives it on Tuberley back to Cullum Dillon should be a score here seem to be hooked <laughs> but Ennis Diamond getting it out Ryan Barry doing the defensive work there and it's now Kevin Hare looking for a counter attack his options aren't brilliant up front he's got a check here and he does gives it off to Tiernan Hogan Tiernan Hogan looks for that option again inside David Fitzgerald David Fitzgerald but it's Eamon Tuberley that gets a, a strong fist to it get that ball out he's a real target man in there at the full forward line Dave Fitzgerald the county senior hurler of course Parker Horn gives it out here to Ronan Good again now Good looking for someone but the runs were made and instead it's in his time to come out again and Kevin Harris has been on an, an amount of position here at the early stages gives it off to David McNamara Kyle Dillon Here's Carl Malone. Malone. Offloads to Owen Rewind. Owen Rewind, determined run. He's held up, he's got the advantage. And it's nothing as a crew there. A free for Ennis Diamond as they look to make it 3 1 here. And Paul Dillon is back on the field after that black card. So doing big back to the full complement, 15 players. And they haven't shipped much damage, Derek, in the meantime. There's only two points to one. This could make it three, of course. This could make it three, but the Dunbeg will be very happy to be only two points down. Dunbeg seem very efficient in defence, working around as far as midfield. But then they have no options inside, only the two men. They really need, if they're giving it inside, they need to launch it into Cullum Dillon, I think, at this stage. Yeah, and here's that free from Killian Wine. Looks to be outside the post, unless it curls in. It doesn't curl in in time, and that's another miss in a Simon's second wide of the afternoon. Dunbeg have also had two, both of them from place balls. But it's still 2 1 here. The game probably needs a bit of a spark, maybe a goal or something to get it going, Derek. Well, as long as the spark isn't the, the, another black card on, because tensions are beginning to mount out here. It's tough and tight. Looks like of course, no one wants to go into the losers' group, so this is with the water break here now. This will, you know, it, I suppose with we would like the to losers' group containing Petlo, Nicktown, Candy Gad, no one wants to win this. The importance of this wouldn't be lost to the two teams out there today, you know? Definitely, I'm just going to name that in his time name again because I got a bit flustered there. I got it at the last minute. I think there's 47 changes <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is. A lot of scribbles on my, on my page here. So just to, to clarify that again, Shane Keane in goal, Dara Keneally, Sean O'Driscoll and Adam Ralph. It's David McNamara that's wing back. It's Killian Rewine as the number 11. He's back at the centre back and Tiernan Hogan there on the other wing. A midfield pairing of Matty Kinch and Kyle Malone. On the wing is Kevin Herr. The centre forward is Sean Rewine. And on the other wing, it's Owen Ryan. And then a full forward line of Ryan Barry, David Fitzgerald and Michael McDonough. Easier the second time, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> everything, everything is on. Everything is. Yeah, so the water break. Look, it'll give it time and a chance to regroup because they have 15 minutes now to try and pile on that scores with, with, the, with the win. They haven't really got... Now, David Fitzgerald has been dangerous in there at the edge of the square. He has. He has, in fairness. And he's looking, very unlucky for a goal. And I suppose when it's this tight out here, a goal would be a huge score at this stage. 
Joe Begg would be quite happy. There were only a pint down. You know, the weather of the storm with the, with the men down. And as I said, they're very, very efficient coming out with the ball as far as midfield. I think, you know, they're just, they've no option really. They're looking up for men to make a run inside. It's not materialising. And in that instance, maybe they'd be better off launching it into Cullen Dillon. He's a big unit in there. He's a fine full forward. And, you know, he could pluck a mark and have a little tap over the score. It's probably a lot of tension there because with the way that this losers group has, has, has borne out, you've now got Milton inside there, you've got Cracklow inside, you've got Clandigad, Kilrush, and you've two more to come here this evening. So the loser, this one goes into a pot that's only going to have one team to make that semi final. Yeah, if you look at this, if you asked someone a week ago to pick a winner of the championship, yeah. you know, and you sat down with all the sports journalists and Claire, I'm sure Milton would have come out with someone, Cracklow would have been a pick of some. Yeah. You know, even Clandigad yeah. would have been Dark Horse in the championship for a few years. So the losers group is not somewhere you really want to find yourself. So you win here today and, you know, you're a step away from. A semi final, yeah. Yeah, you know, which is. In the current conditions, you know, it would mean an awful, awful lot to be in a semi-final. Definitely, and we're back on the field here after the water break. Some much-needed sustenance on board, and let's see what this second quarter brings. Because, in all fairness, while Dunbeg are back to 15 in a Steinwood field, that they should have more scores on the board. It's only two points to one here. A lot to be played. Four wide in this time, and, and that, of course, look, it wasn't there for the Charles fault. He did everything right, caught the ball, beat his man outside of the boot, it just, you know, hit the post. He did everything right, but in this time, we need to up their conversion rate. And here we go again. And Sean Conway wins the free from Eamon Tubbley's kick out, and they're underway again. It's Doombeg on the counter attack already. And it's Owen Conway. Making good ground up here, and he's played it right into the corner for Owen Tuberley. That's a very good foot pass. Owen Tuberley managed to get around his marker. He looked up and he didn't see much inside. He's played it back to Brian Egan. That's a lofty one then. That's Cullum Dillon ball, and he's been held. But on, it's the first time that they launched one into Cullum Dillon, and he's won a simple free now for a tap over. Yeah, Colin Dillon did well there. He was held in the tackle. To it is an option for Doombeg, especially against the breeze. The ball will hold up. So, David Tuberley has the opportunity to double his tally for the afternoon. At this much the same angle as it was the last time that he converted Dumbeg's first point. So, he's looking to level up the tie. This will make the team's level on for the second time. 22 minutes gone. It's Ennis Diamond 2. It's Dumbeg 2. And David Tuberley getting both of those scores, both from freeze. So it was a very soft free to give away, you know, from the from, from the full back. He, he played the man. He didn't necessarily attack the ball. And as I said, if you keep launching ball into Colin Dillon, he will he will do damage inside. Absolutely. And there's a great ball out, but it's claimed by Doombeg against the head, and it's Ty Lillis. As I mentioned, on the clear on the 20 team this year on the panel. Up we go, and here's Michael Tuberley with a little header there, lovely, lovely, <laughs> lovely bit of skill there. It up. Gives out to Park Aaron, it's back to Michael Tuberley again. A good link man here around the centre for Doombeg so far. Gives it back to that young man, Ty Lillis. Lillis is just held up. Again, the options aren't brilliant. He was seen to be tackled, but Wayne King says to get up. Didn't see anything wrong. And instead, it's Park Aaron. Making true, he's got Paul Dillon outside him. And that's who he gives it to. Paul Dillon weaves between two players. Saw David Tuberley, but gives it back to Ronan Good. And that is just tailing away. Just up against that breeze. And that's Doombeg's third wide of the afternoon. And it's Diamond noticeably dropped Cahill Malone right in front of the full back line there. Once Doombeg had position in the midfield, Malone retreated. And that's obviously to cut off the ball threat to Cullum Dillon. Absolutely. So Doombeg had no option in the Ronan And Good was forced to snatch at that. It was a poor kick, you know, it was a poor option. He should have tried to recycle it out. And here we go again. Shane Keane getting it out there. Breaks kindly for Owen Ryan. And here they go. They certainly have pace in their team. That's Tiernan Hogan cutting in towards the centre. He gives it off to Sean Ryan. What can he do? Gives it to Owen Ryan. Has a look at the post. So that's a great block from Brian Egan. Dave Fitzgerald who's coming a bit out the field now. Gets on the ball. And they patiently build again, but it's Kevin Herald who makes the break in the centre, he's going to throw a goal. Oh, it's just over the bar. 
But that's much better for Ennis Diamond in terms of attacking threat. Yeah, they moved the ball much faster there. There was no, no holding on to it. Got the ball, recycled it quick. Men coming up on the outside, played it into his path. Her did the right thing, like he blazed it high, but and maybe his intent was, you know, if it dipped in under the crossbar, he wouldn't have been too, too unhappy with it, but he made sure of the point. It was interesting to note that in his time in the final two years ago, they've only seven of that team starting today, so a lot of young players coming into it, maybe injuries forcing a lot of players out, but seven changes from the final team of two years ago. They've great underage success, they've no conveyor belt to talent coming through. Absolutely. Do Beg have a couple of young faces in there today as well? And here's Michael Tuberty. Carl Killeen manages to get through one of those young players and there's Cullum Dillon gets inflicted to it but not strong enough to trouble and do big of bearing down that event. A lot of pressure in there but it's Carl Malone that relieves that pressure. Carl Malone getting out to Sean Driscoll. Back to Malone. Malone who got his championship underway with Six Mile Bridge last weekend and they got off to a winning start. He's hoping to do likewise. Now, Sean Ryan trying to use that breeze and trying to use that big target man inside Dave Fitzgerald. This time on Conway, much more assured, manages to break that ball and Eamon Tumberley cleans up. Joe Blake gets out to Ty Glillis, Parker Horn back to Ty Glillis, and Dubai get themselves out of trouble. Yeah, it was a, I think it was a full option really from this time and launching it in looking for that catch. And, uh, I suppose they only need one. They nearly came off a couple of minutes ago. Some big defences. It's pretty solid at the moment. Just four minutes of normal time remaining in the half, and we haven't been blessed with scores so far, but certainly an interesting and intriguing battle of these magpies. And it's Ronan Good, who also wears the blue and gold for the market. Ty Glillis looking for Ron Tuberley inside. Kind of hesitated, and it was enough for Adam Ralph to get in there and win a free and that's just good defending that was very good defending by young Ralph there now Carl Malone has to check his run and go back because he was faced with three Doombeg players and it's time and do have a lot of men spare over this side and that's where they're coming and it's Killian Rewind who plays it out to the left wing out to Tiernan Hogan again Hogan oh that's going to be a tackle I felt that one in my own bones up here in the stand David McNamara getting that one that was a championship tackle one <laughs> that, was a, that was a winder he'll take a couple of minutes to, to get his breath again Derek Keneally playing it out to that man Kevin Hare again he just got a point a few minutes ago and that's the only difference between these sides he manages to break the tackle getting through Kyle Killeen finds an option it's Ryan Barry out here in the corner again checking that run a lot of two big players back there Sean Ryan trying to play it in over the top and that's a beautiful ball for Killian Ryan and he's fouled and draws the free that was an expertly weighted pass yeah look he probed they were patient they waited for for the right ball to go inside and when Killian Ryan makes that run you got to give it to him yeah yeah he's a danger man this gives him a chance to open up a two point lead which would be the, the biggest lead of the half one the Clare Minor captain of 2018 he won a, a title a Minor A title for Ennis Diamond last year as well and was on this year's under 20 panel as well so a key figure and will be a key figure in the senior jersey for Clare in the coming years as well it seems I have no doubt he has his top class ability in so he's looking for his second free that he deserves after being held down the red boots singling him off for special attention I suppose yeah. <laughs> he doesn't need the red boots to be spotted uh, yeah. <laughs> here we go and that's over perfect the umpire just uh, giving us a small bit of attention there to make sure will it is it isn't it but it's the score and it means that Ennis Diamond now have a double scores lead over Doombeg for the very first time it's four points to two and we're into the 28th minute of the half again Doombeg won't be too concerned about that scoreline because they do have a big breeze to come and now that ball's played for Owen Tuberley he's got the legs it was Adam Rath that got in Hilly in the last time but this time it's Tuberley that's on top looks to be fouled but he's not going to get a free here he's got to look around assess these options gives it back to Paul Dillon Paul Dillon get out to Sean Conway the momentum has gone out of that attack and it's Kevin Herr again that comes out with the ball Kevin Herr back to Matty Kinch Kevin Herr has been very prominent so far 
in this opening half. It's only got a final few minutes to go. We're going to have a couple of minutes for the water break, inevitably. And in that time, in time, we'll be hoping to chalk up a few more scores before the halftime whistle, because as I said, they do have a strong breeze at their backs. It's Ryan Barry getting to Derek Keneally. Keneally. Now, here's the big one from Michael McDonough again. That's probably the best point of the half. There was, no, there was a small bit of doubt about his first effort, but there was definitely no doubting that one. And that's Michael McDonough's second of the afternoon. And suddenly there's a three-point gap in it. With five points to end this time, and it's only two for Doombeg. We're just coming up to 29 and a half minutes gone. We're going to see how many minutes of injury time are. Is Wayne King going to signify? Doombeg, meanwhile, are back on the ball. Brian Egan plays it for Ty Glillis on the overlap. This has got a bit of purpose about him. Brian Egan lofts it in there. Great catch from Adam Ralph. Again, he wins that free. That's his second free that he's won. And Carl Malone about to set them up for another counter attack. Here we go. David McNamara gives it off to Carl Malone. Just around the 45 meter line, finds Ryan Barry in the corner. He's going to have to cut back here. Just about keeps it in play. He's turned. Is it a foul? It was a push. And Ryan Barry wins a free. And suddenly the gap is beginning to widen. It's a good opportunity for Ennis Diamond to go 6 2 up as we're about. We're just into injury time here. There's two minutes of additional time to come, and we're already. 45 seconds into that, so roughly the bones of 70 two 75 seconds. His game rewind it will step up to try and get his third free of the afternoon. It's on the 14 meter line, but the angle is far from easy. He's over here in the right corner. Shapes up, it's given. Ronald McMahon says it is a point, and it, indeed it is. And it's now six points to two to Ennis Diamond. Kilroy, three of those from place balls. Michael McDonough with a brace, and Kevin Hare getting the one in between. Well, for Doombeg, it's just those two David Tuberley frees that they have on their account so far. Eamon Tuberley feeds it out to Sean Conway. Sean Conway breaking down that wing. Looking for Park O'Hearn, his other wing back. Finds him. David Hubberley. Again out to Sean Conway. A very exciting young player. Floats it in again towards Colin Dillon. Colin breaks it, but it's Adam Ralph that picks up the pieces. Keeps Owen Ryan. It's Adam Ralph off again. Owen Ryan. And Michael McDonough. He's been held. And wins the free. We're over the additional two minutes of time that Wayne King indicated, so this is probably going to be the final attack for the Simon. Can they prosper with one final score before the halftime break? They're going to get it. It's probably going to cut through Kevin Harris' hands because he's been in a lot of ball here. It's the final in half is Kevin Harris. Absolutely, another of those. I only killed him on a contingent. Alongside Dave Fitzgerald has been the target man at full forward. They also got off to a winning start again last week against Clooney Quinn. Floated in towards the aforementioned Fitzgerald. It's gone over his head. Owen Rewine looks for it, but it's Eamon Tubbley that cleans up. And will that be the halftime whistle? Wayne King has a look at his watch. That should be a two. They should see out the half now. Park O'Hearn is looking for that halftime whistle because he's under a bit of pressure here from David Fitzgerald. He has the advantage. And it, to beg that will be afforded the opportunity to have one final attack. Michael Tubbley on the ball. What gives it off to run and good. He yards of space in front of Dylan inside or. Gives out to Carl Killeen, the young man on the wing here. He lofts it, and that's the ball inside. Colin Dillon got a fist to it, but it wasn't enough. Sean Driscoll was strong. He gives it to Adam Ralph, and Adam Ralph wins his third free of the half. He's a tenacious cornerback, is Adam Ralph. Yeah. Tough tackling. And like the lot of the Einstein team, a big man in yeah, there. A big unit, fans. Yeah, it's easy to see why they got to that final two years ago but that's been surrounded by four quarter final appearances which they'd get back to if they were able to win this game and they're certainly on the right road as they're six points to two up but we won't 
count our chickens yet because Dunbeg have a strong breeze to come in the second half. Wayne King doesn't want this half to end. We're now into 34 minutes. He indicated that there should only be two minutes of additional time. But we go on. Surely that's it. No. <laughs> he doesn't seem to be looking at the watch on. Ah, he's enjoying it's another. He's enjoying the football. Power Curl on the overlap. Can he keep it in play? He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't. Doesn't. Oh, managed to get another push in there as well. Paul Howard, knowing that he'd stepped over the line, just he's about to claim that ball. Surely now we're 34 and a half minutes gone. Surely there's a half time whistle coming. Bit of a set two here in front of us between Owen Ryan and Kyle Killeen. What's in assignment? It seems there's no interest in blowing this whistle on. No. Maybe he's, think, he's watch now. maybe he's thinking inter-county standard here, 35 minutes and a half. Anyway, we'll keep going. It's a lovely foot pass on. Yeah, Ryan Barry won a free a couple of minutes ago. Plays the ball inside, that's towards Dale Rickemeyer, but that's never going to make it. And down over this side, we have Owen Rewain on the ground. Himself and Kyle Killeen had been having a bit of a... I'm going to plead the fifth on that one on. I'm yeah. going to plead the fifth. I didn't see it myself either. I'm not, I'm not playing the Arsene Wenger on it here. I didn't actually well, see I'm it. Well, I'm kind of playing the Wenger now because I don't want the wrong movement. Yeah, that is the halftime whistle. Probably underwhelming considering the, the end of that half. But at halftime, it's Ennis Diamond 6. It's Doombeg 2. And Ennis Diamond are looking for more action. But, unfortunately, that's not to come. But... We're waiting for the second half to come. Dunbeg had the breeze, but in the, at the moment, it's in this time that leads 6-2 here in the opening round of the Clare County Senior Football Championship. Probably, if you look at this, you know, they probably deserve that four-point lead. And we're all set here for the second half. Wayne King will be looking for a ball now in a couple of seconds because he has no balls to throw in, but with 30 minutes to the side, who goes into the winner's pot? which is much more lucrative than it was at the start of the weekend. And who goes into that dreaded loser's pot alongside the likes of defending champions, St. Joseph's Middletown, the 2013 and 14 champions, Cracklaw, and 2017 finalist, Clan de Gale, along with Kirush, who came up from intermediate level in 2018. One of these has to fall into that bare pit. Well, we're about to see who is. And at the moment, it's Ennis Diamond are in the ascendancy by four points. And Wayne King throws in that ball. Michael Tuberty and Manny Kinch, and it's Kinch that wins it, and he gets it off to Colin Malone. Colin Malone, they're immediately on the attack. He gets off to that, and Kevin Herr. Herr, tackled by Ronan Good, manages to get away. They'll be playing against each other in the market. Michael Malone, oh, and that's a free. Ryan Barry was hauled down. You could see a card on. You could see a card for that, but Ryan Barry was cut inside. It was a lovely pass from Kevin Herr. Looks like Keenan Manny's about to go into the book here. Ryan Barry unceremoniously hauled down there and it gives Keelan Ryan an opportunity just to tack on a score. Get oh, black it's a black card again for Doombeg. That's their second of the game. Paul Dillon went off early in the first half and that was Keenan Manny was off in the second half after only 45 seconds. That is a big blow to Doombeg's chances here. Particularly as Keelan Ryan has a very scoreable free he looks to put five between the sides and that's exactly what he does he got three in the opening half it's his fourth of the afternoon and even, totally, even though the man down will be keen to get this restart quickly because Dunbeg need to get themselves in gear for what will be an even tougher task now he kicks it out it was a great kick but unfortunately it went to a white jersey and that was David McNamara who won the mark. Kevin Herr playing it to Dark and Ely. Black card is going to the middle. Influence on the outcome on it. It's a poor start for the big to the second half. Down yeah. Man already. Lost a man and a point. So, so now five down. But if there's any team that has a stubborn resistance in them, it's Doombeg, as we saw right here in Hennessy Memorial Park in Milltown in last year's quarter final when they brought Aerog all the way to extra time before a dramatic win. Steps on. That's the correct carrying, call by King. Over carrying, and it does give Doombeg a bit of breathing space here. Ty Lillis 
and the Stein will be looking this they made no inroads when Dunbeg were down to 14 in the first period with the black car and the Stein will be surely looking to make inroads here and put up a lead and see out the game these 10 minutes will be crucial to the outcome of the match one if Dunbeg can keep it to 5 or even go up the field and get a score you know it'll set up a, a spicy 20 minutes definitely and here we have Owen Conway on the ball David Tuberley is not really where you want to see him back in his own half back line but someone's got a build and again he's had to come back because of that black card and shore up that defence now it's Michael Tuberley great running in the first half he gives it off to Owen Tuberley Owen is hounded by Adam Ralph again but is a judge to have fouled Owen Tuberley so that's going to be a free for David Tuberley but it's not it's the kindest of angles. It's, it's not a tap over on. This is a tough, tough, tough free. It is, but if anyone is going to convert it, it will be this man. The only score for doing big so far. He's got two frees. They're yet to score from play, but they won't mind that if they can keep tapping over these Absolutely. frees. Absolutely, it would be very important here not to let this ball go dead. In case he's it might. Going to have to be, he's going to have to aim for the far post and try and cut it in with the middle one. Well, if it does fall short, Cullum Dillon is a good option there, but he's surrounded he's by four in his time. Tuberty, that's, that's floated over. It's a beautiful score. It's an expertly taken free kick on. We never doubted him. And now, Not for a second, <laughs> it's seven points to three. Doombeg finally getting off the mark in the second half. And they've cut the deficit back to four, but it's still a long road ahead. Sean O'Driscoll getting things back underway. They had the spare man, so let's see what they can do with it. Owen Ryan. He goes off to Killian. And back to Sean Driscoll. Now, Michael McDonough. Dave McNamara. Sean Ryan gives it off to Carl Malone. Seemed to be checked on the way there, but Dubé got away with it. Now, can they make the most of it? Brian Dillon. Rona Good gives off to Ty Lillis. Finds Kyle Clean out here on the left wing. But all his options are behind him. There's very, very few men in front of him. And they're all congregated around the centre. There are only two men inside the 45 on it. It limits their options. It does. But there is a spare man out in the right wing. There's Paul Dillon. He has a look at the pose. Looks to be going wide. And it is. Doombeg's first wide of the second half and their fourth overall. As we approach 40 minutes, Doombeg, even though they'll be happy 24 points down, they still fail to score from play. Yeah, and they need to be taking every opportunity you'd feel. Absolutely on. Absolutely. Even though they have the backing of a strong breeze, it's still a big task, particularly with 14 men. And they will have that for another nine minutes, or another four minutes. Four kick out there, one. It is, and David Tuberty has it. The right man you want on the ball. He lofts it from 45 metres, oh, and one. it's straight over the bar. That one, that is a glorious point. Off his left foot, Off left. His left foot, and never ever deviated from the target. From the left boot, side. right boot, it doesn't matter. David Tuberty is David Tuberty, and that's his fourth of the afternoon. He's doing Beg's only score, and it means that the gap is back to three. Stop and play here, they're looking for another ball. Nobody wants to give in that ball. And it's Diamond certainly don't. That's great leadership there, want to take on the mental of the score from play. Dumbeg, as I just said, they hadn't scored from play. Moments later, Tuberty must have heard me from here. And yeah. He decided, I'll split the post 45 metres out on. Never deviated from the target, a fantastic score. Yeah, he has been their tallies man for a few years now and he's one of the few survivors I suppose from that 2010 county title winning side alongside Joe Blake, Park O'Horn, Cullum Dillon and Brian Egan and it's Ronan Good on the ball the Cork man who also plays Harlan Whitney, Mark and Fergus until last year at least it's Paul Dillon To Michael Tuberty. Michael Tuberty alongside David has been very influential. He's taken a lot of steps but wins a free. Could have gone either way that one. Yeah, Gary. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a toss of a kind. I don't know which way Wayne was going to give it, but he opted to give it to Jumbeg and look Jumbeg will be very happy. And if 
If they get another score here to close the gap to two, it would be a fantastic few minutes for them. He's going to take it with his left boot from the hands. This would be the third point in a row for Doombeg. And considering they're down to 14 men, it is an admirable comeback here. They so just never know when they're beating Doombeg. You have to give credit where credit's due. Now, 45 metres out. It's going towards it. Oh, but unfortunately, just went outside that left post. And it's Doombeg's second wide of the second half. They just have five overall. A bit of a let off for Ennis Diamond who, despite getting the opening score in the second half, haven't really capitalised on that and it's been too big that have been the team in the ascendancy so far. Matty Kinch trying to get up there, does break for David McNamara. And again, David Tuberty is dispossessed, Derek Keneally on the ball, gives it off to Cahill Malone. Malone, looking up, under no pressure at the moment, but Paul Dillon is circling around, hugs him. That wasn't a socially distant hug there, Derek. He had his hand up there for a free arm, which I don't think it was a free. I think it was a great big tackle. Well, he did kind of sit in him for a finish, so... <laughs> I'll give you that one. Yeah. Now, Sean Rewind plays in over the top for Michael McDonough. Michael McDonough's got two points so far. Can he make it three? Makes the angle a little kinder for himself. Oh, look to go through a sea of Doombeg players there. And it wasn't really an option. Instead, it's Doombeg to build up and it's David Tuberty very, very close to his own goal. And the man is all over the field at this stage. <laughs> he is. I'm saying anything. Now, Sean Conway. Manages to break the first tackle. Gets it back to Ronan Good. Good looks around and inevitably finds Michael Tuberley, who's been a great link player for Doombeg throughout this game so far. They're just coming up to the two-thirds mark. Still only three points, a kick of a ball between the sides. Doombeg look to be getting more and more dangerous as this game goes on. Ty Glillis feeding it over for Owen Tuberley. Tuberley has a look, checks in. That's curling off the post and over. And a great score. The first pair outside David Lubberley to score in its own Tuberley that reduces the gap to just two as we come up to the 40 minute mark. Oh, and this is a fantastic response from Joe Big. Down a man. <laughs> Suddenly there were five points down. They've hit three unanswered points in a row. Yeah, and they could be leveling for those two frees as well. So it's, it's all to play for here. Colin Malone is receiving some attention. It just actually just seems to be a contact lens. Look at his eye anyway, definitely. Yeah, I think it's a, a contact lens is getting some fluid there. And that's more from Owen Tuberley. Surely lift his teammates around him. You know, David Tuberley, he contributed to four scores. And now another doing big man has scored. So surely it gives him a bit more momentum. 14 men, the confidence now must be eking into their bones. Definitely, and it gives Kieran Keller, the new Einstein manager, a lot to think about as well. You know, do they change tack at this stage? They're still a man up. And in the first half one, they weren't man up for 10 minutes, they failed to register. Yeah. Score. Now we're approaching that 10 minute mark. In fact, I think it is time up now. And they, again, 10 minutes with a man up, failed to score. Now, is that in its time it's fault, or do we have to put it too big for their resilience? Definitely, doing big are not easily overcome. That's a kick off from Shane Keane, but it looks to be going to be picked up by Park Ahern, as he's done so many times. And other, as I mentioned, is those survivors from 2010. So that experience could be invaluable as this game goes on and Paul Dillon lofts it towards Cullum. Oh, Cullum Dillon. Oh, he did very well. Looked look to be brought down. Looked a bit awkward, weren't I guess? Did he fall over? Is it a penalty, you want? Is it a penalty? Well, he's signaled for a free. With the way Cullum Dillon put his hands up to his face, it looked like Wayne King was just going to give the 14 metre free, but he used his body for really plenty of time. There, and he, he bought that free one. Great experience. <laughs> Yeah, we're almost 42 minutes gone. The water break couldn't come soon enough for this time, and, and while well, Doombeg don't want any water. No, Doombeg don't seem to need anything. 
And David Tuberty taps that one over. Adversity doing bit. Once to once, once to down a man, down a few scores, it suddenly rises up. <laughs> yeah, we're now only a point between the sides. And doing big are back to their full complement of players. Keno Manny coming back on the field after that black card. So the momentum is with doing big, but there's still a point behind. And it's Diamond looking for a bit of inspiration here. A small bit of leadership required if they are the last three to push on. For the last Diamond have been won by doing big. Diamond needed to win that kick out just to, you know, just to lift the siege a bit. Matty Kinch getting up highest and as Sean Rewine is on. Looks around him but Ronan Good is not going to give up that easily. Sean Rewine plays it to Owen. Owen Rewine down that right wing followed by Cahill Killeen. And it's Cahill Malone that's on the ball. Plays it centrally for Kinch who won that vital kick out. And now they're on the attack. There's a bit, a bit of party party inside around the square. But Ryan Barry's back at his feet. It could just be in time. It's Kevin Herr. Oh, Derek Kennedy shipped a tackle there. Legally, Wayne King says. Tyg Lillis getting in. And it's enough Great to defensive work by loosen Benny. the ball for David Tuberley to launch another counter attack here. It's Kaha Killeen who was on the left wing a minute ago. Now he's on the right. And Sean O'Driscoll had to be strong there because Colin Dillon was waiting in behind. He was strong. And now it's in a Simon on the ball again. Here we go. Out to Mighty McDonough. McDonough giving it to Kevin Harr. Hare is right in the left corner, but he does, certainly has pace. Managed to get around the first man, but saw two Doombeg men in front of him. He still has that horde of black jerseys in front of him, so he's got to check and go back. It's Sean Rewine. I mentioned about the RG Bargy in the square, and Ryan Barry being held, it seems, by Brian Egan. And it's a free in for Ernest Simon and a tap over, a very soft free for Dunbeg to give away just when they had the momentum of kicking four unanswered points. We're just coming up a minute away from the water break and this would be vital for Ernest Diamond to double their advantage back to two. And it's inevitably going to be Killian Rewine that's going to take this one. He's already got four frees. He'll surely make it a fifth. And he does. Ennis Diamond now got two clear again. It's 8 6. But Dumbeg and Eamon Tuberley will be quick, quickly trying to get this game underway. Now, what are his options? He sees Ronan Good and David Tuberley out here in the wing, and it's going towards David Tuberley. But Derek Keneally just gets a strong arm in there and puts it out over the line. David Tuberley looks around. Seamus O'Reilly isn't moving from his chair. Ronan Good, back to Park Ahern. What a great engine this man has. Didn't look to be pushed, but didn't get a free. And instead, it's in this diamond that can free out. And it's Adam Ralph again, like a free magnet throughout this afternoon. He gets it off to Michael McDonough. McDonough back to Ralph. Ralph has won four frees. Can he top up a good afternoon with a score? Gives it back to Sean Roy. They're finding it hard to break down this stubborn Doombeg defence and he's got to go right back to midfield and Dara Keneally, Dara Keneally on the under 20 Clare team this year. Also won the minor championship with Ennis Diamond last year and Kevin Ayer lofts it in towards the square. David Fitzgerald is there. He's going to kill him on a club mate. He gets on the possession and kicks it over. Finally they get some joy out of that David Fitzgerald move. Normally plays around the centre but today is manning a full forward line and that's a second in a row for Ennis Diamond who are now 9-6 in front. Water break surely for Wayne King and that's what he calls just in time. Ennis Simon just getting the two points before the water break, Derek, and that's vital for them. Oh, and if you could explain this one to me, now I'd be highly impressed. <laughs> Ennis Simon failed to score two periods <laughs> of 10 minutes against 14 men. As soon as Dumbay are, are, are fully equipped to 15, and Ennis Simon seemed to up their game and come back with a couple of scores. Can you explain that to me? <laughs> they just don't want to do it too easy, you know. Why do it the easy way when you can do it the hard way? But they were about to get the hairdryer treatment, so maybe they thought to themselves, you know, yeah. we need to tack on a few scores here. See, Kieran Keller was getting a bit mad. <laughs> yeah. They spotted that. Yeah. Credit to them. But credit to both sides. Look, it was a tough, tense opening, you know, opening 15 minutes. And, you know. 
anyone here that's lucky to see this. It's a full-blooded championship encounter. Definitely, there isn't much of a crowd here, uh, but it's both mainly, mainly mentors and, sub and, uh, and substitutes, but we're a full-blooded contest so far. But Doombay have that breeze. They're only three behind. I see there's a couple sitting over on the, on the wall at the far side. I think they've probably uh, <laughs> climbed the wall. Maybe the ladders or the hardware shops are on. They're getting them in trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, as I said, the, you know, Dunbeck have a strong breeze. There's only kick of a ball still between the sides. So, the final quarter, could we be in for a grandstand finish? Absolutely. And if Dunbeck, you know, Dunbeck still always have the option of launching that ball in, especially with the breeze to Colum Dillon. And as you said earlier on in your commentary, all it takes is one catch, beat the full back, rattle the back of the net. Yeah. You know, now they will need someone else to step up and score. That is the only thing. Oh, and Tuberty came into there with a fine point, but, you know, David has got five of the six scores. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's a talisman for any club, any team, but they will need someone else to step up with a score. We've got two Ennis Diamond subs warming up here, and I wonder, will they look to freshen their pack ahead of what's going to be a, a strong final quarter against the Breeze? So it's Niall Canavan and Michael Lee that are just getting, and it looks like the slip of paper is going to be written, so it's Kieran Keller looking to make those changes and try and freshen up their, their legs for what's going to be a, a tough final quarter. He has plenty of options, Kieran Keller, as we said, the, in his time with a great underage success. I think I noticed the programme there, like he's, he's 38, let's talk down. You know, so he has plenty of options to choose from. They struggle to distribute the tickets after that, I'd say, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 38 players alone. Not to mind the the backroom staff that has eight on it as well. So at half time doing bigger four points down and all of a sudden the start of the second half, they're five down and a men down. Now if you said to the Doombeg management at the water break we'd only be three points down, you know, they would have taken that. So I think we're set up for a grandstand finish. The next score will be crucial. If in this time and get it and stretch the lead to four, is there a way back for Doombeg? If Doombeg get it we're down to two and two point lead isn't much in any game. Yeah, definitely. And the two players to come off are Ryan Barry and Owen Ryan. And in their places go Niall Canavan and Michael Lee, as we're about to just recommence after water break. And it's an Ennis, or Doom Big kickout. Eamon Tuberley about to restart matters for what could be a tense final quarter. We're 11 minutes of normal time to go, but with substitutes in that water break, we're looking at at least four or five minutes of injury time as well. And if then it's the first half anything to go by Wayne King might not be slow up at all. Well, I'm sure that the whatever few that are here will be much more audible by that stage because <laughs> <laughs> it's starting to get squeaky bum time. Well, it's opened up for him here, huh? Michael Tuberley. David Tuberty, oh, another great score. That's a fantastic score. His jersey was pulled, he still turned inside. <laughs> David Tuberty scored one off his left boot and that one from around the same distance off his right. Just shows Class what's is permanent on. Class is permanent. Absolutely, and that's his sixth of the afternoon out of Doombeg's tally of seven and the gap is back to two. As you said, that first score is vital and we're about 10 minutes away. 10 minutes remaining of normal time. Still plenty of time for Doombeg to get up to that. And it's Michael Tuberty that gets up high. Got the mark even though he dropped it. He gets off to Owen Tuberty. And here's the man in the overlap, Sean Conway, who has played in the forwards before, so he's not shy of the score. But that is a great tackle from Gillian Rewine. And it's a free out in his diamond. Inspirational one. Killing Rewine again. You know, we've seen what he can do from freeze and bursting forward, but that defensive play as well. He was strong, he didn't give away what would have been a silly free. Oh, and in fairness, his line of running was, was spot on. He cut off cut off the direct access to goal, forcing the big attacker out onto the side and where he could, you know, at the turn in and poor option there. Here we go again. It's Colin Malone on the ball. Malone. He probably should have fisted that one over the bar as soon as he put inside. Yeah, but probably saw the headlines. Bit of rush of blood to the head. No rush of blood to the head for Ennis Diamond. They're happy enough to keep it here in their own half back line. It's Carl Malone to Kevin Herr. Kevin Herr just weaves his way past and gives a beautiful pass back to Malone, who looks to set up attack. That's a kind of a, a, a long one for that's a poor Michael Lee to try and get. Unfortunately, that's gone all over the sideline. It's Parker Horn that's going to get to big back and play. He does have Ty Glitz in front of him. And that's one straight into his path. And Dubeg are on the attack. Kahal Kaleen looks for Keno Manny. Back to Lillis. That's a free. Lillis is tripped. Free. Could be a black car near on. He was tripped with the hand. 
Yes. I expect he will be a David McNamara one. is just hoping that Wayne King didn't see the full extent of that one. Looked like a hand trip. More unfortunate. Would have been perfect in rugby, but not <laughs> yeah, in Gaelic football, unfortunately. We're not, we're not in Tolman Park. It is a black card on a black in the 22nd minute. Yeah, a black card for David McNamara, and that means that he'll probably miss until the very, very latter stages of this contest. And now the worm has turned because it's too big that now have the extra player and have a free. And David Toberly has proved very proficient so far. He's about 40 metres out. Wayne King is just telling him, oh, you've scored a few so far. You surely put this one over. Again, he's opting with the left. Yeah. Ah, look, nothing surprises us with him. No. Here we go. Again, it's a laughter. It's Back looking to towards the right post, and unfortunately, it does go Chance wide. Goes a big, you can to reduce it to the minimum one. It does. It's their sixth wide, and they've only got seven scores. And will that one be costly? Because they had the momentum in their, in their side, and we're now 53 minutes gone. It'd be very interesting to see how Ines Donovan respond to being down a man. They didn't cope well with being up a man. I mentioned the five players that were the survivors from the 2010 winning Dunbeg side. It looks like a, the sixth one is about to make his way on the field, Ender Doyle, and that's another great experienced man. He's warming up on the far sideline. Meanwhile, it's Ennis Diamond on the attack. There's Tieran. Tieran Hogan. Mike Lee gives it off to Killian Rewine. Has a look. They have the score. Brian Riley gives the nod. And that is a vital one for Ennis Diamond. And that's his first from play. And he's sixth overall. He was strong in the tackle at the back a few minutes ago. And shows that he's got an eye for a score as well. Ennis Diamond now lead by three. We're 54 minutes got the clock for Doombeg. He's inexorably running down, and that substitute was made. Ender Doyle coming on for Paul Dillon for the last six minutes of the half. And Ender Doyle has immediately gone in towards the full forward line. So that's one, another one to watch. And it's Killing Rewind that's marking him. Dunbeg don't want to be having the ball in that half. They need to be pushing on now, and it's Owen Conway. Who spots Ronan Good in a small bit of space. Ender Doyle is looking for it. Gives it back to Conway. Conway plays inside Don Tuberley. Oh, perfect. He's got Keena Manny outside him. Keena Manny has a look. And puts it over. A vital score. Trying to make up for that black card he got a little bit earlier. And it's back to a two-point game here. It's ten points to eight. Five minutes of normal time remaining. Very tense. Finale to this opening round game that neither side wants to lose. That loser's pot is looking to be a complete bear pit. Shane Keane in no hurry to get with the ball. They're against the breeze, they're down a man, but they are two points up. He kicks it straight towards David Tuberley, the man you want to be keeping the ball away from. Tuberley has a look, lost it towards Dylan. Dylan looks like he's being held, but no, that ball just drifts behind him in wide. Good defending from Sean O'Driscoll. It means another wide for Doombeg, the fourth of the second half. And seven overall. Again, Shane Keane, this time he'd be looking, he'd be keen to keep it away from David Tuberley, that's for sure. That's a high one. Mally Kinch, but that's punched by Ronan Good, but it's an innocent man that picks up the ball. Tiernan Hogan, managing to get it away. Dara Keneally, Killer Mind slips, just as he's about to do it, and he's in trouble here. He is, he touched the ball on the ground, that slip, just a little bit costly. David Tuberty has it, the free. Gives it to Owen Tuberty, has a jink. Adam Ralph is with him, he looks to be lofted over, and it is, and it's Owen Tuberty's second. And now there's only a point in it, the minimum decides. This game, so we're 56 minutes gone. It's 10 points to nine in favor of Ennis Simon, but it's doing big again. You just can't shake them off, Derek. No, you can't, oh, we're down to a one score game. And if you're a betting man, would you be looking at extra time on? I don't think there'll be much betting men that survived this weekend's shock so far. Kilmehel beating Clandy Gad, Lissy Casey taking extra time to overcome Cracklock. But Ennis Diamond are nothing but, if not determined, they're back on it. Michael Lee win the kick out.
The trouble here is David Tuberty's on him. Manages to compose himself and get back on the ball. He gives it out to Cot Malone. And this time a small bit congested here. They just need to spread out the play a small bit because they have only two options inside. Dave Fitzgerald has come out from his full forward berth. He's hanging around the centre forward. He's on the 40 at the moment. But it's Sean Rewine that has the ball. Killing Rewine. There's only a point in it. Certainly the norms are starting to jangle a bit. It's there's Kevin Hare. They still have five minutes to go without, without, a, man, without a man on. Yeah. And that away. is straight to Ty Glillis. Ty Glillis has had a brilliant start to his Doombeg senior career. Sean Conway out to Ronan Good. He's facing two in a time men, but it again goes for that long ball. And Cullum Dillon, can he keep it in? He can't. Unfortunately, the exit goes wide. Just trying to use that option to call him Dillon. It's not really working out. It's just either side of him at the moment. He's a lot of work to do. He needs to be more direct if you're going to use the call him Dillon option. You need to put it up for him, you know? Not kick it to the side. And the though when Gould had the, when Gould had the ball here, the very little options inside. You know, I think he should have turned, waited for a runner and recycled it. And running through. Two minutes of normal time remaining. It's a lofter again. And it's Park Harner comes out with the ball. He gives it off to end of Doyle. An experienced duo set up Carl Galeen. Will he score? Oh, oh it's short. The David end might have got off the mark and it would have been a famous score if he was to equalise on that occasion. But instead it's Cahan Malone comes out with the ball. Sean Rowan who started at centre forward but is now around the half back line because Ennis Diamond just need to shore up things. You may forget about positions now for the last few minutes. Sean it's all about position. Sean O'Driscoll, the captain in 2018 when they got to the final, relieves the pressure a bit. He gives out to Tieran Hogan, who again finds the substitute, Michael Lee. And Michael Lee looks for Kevin Harris. Safe pair of hands. Back to Lee. It's about to mount an attack. And here is Dave Fitzgerald. Can he make the most of... He looks at Lee. Nobody really wants to shoot here. But they didn't have to because it was a free. And Michael Lee justifying his introduction by winning that free. And Killian Rewine will get the opportunity to try and get his seven point of the afternoon. It would be his sixth free. And it looks like another substitution for Ennis Diamond. And it's Sean McConaughey. What a man to be bringing on. The goal getter. Supreme from 2018 when he brought him all the way to the final. And he got the penalty actually in the in the opening game last year to seal Doombeg's fate. Will he do likewise again on this occasion? But we'll wait for that grandstand finish because we've 30 seconds of normal time to go and we're just going to see what Wayne King adds on because there's bound to be a couple of minutes, four or five you'd imagine. It's Killer Wine. Three, it looks like, three additional minutes. And it's a score, Killian Rewine gets that seventh point. And now, two points in it again. A dangerous lead, two points. Superb kick out there from him and Tuberty inside. Kyle Killeen manages to find on Tuberty. It's in, again it's outside of the zone. And it's gone wide. Doombeg six wide of the second half. The ninth three minutes of overall. Time. Three minutes. And that official announcement of three additional minutes. It's the first half sentence go by, we can double that to six on. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. We're 30 seconds into that additional time. Doombeg needs score. And here comes David McNamara back in the field to make it 15 for this diamond. Perfect timing for them just after they get in that big score to give them a small bit of breathing space and Manny Kinch is again rise highest up to the clouds to pick that one out and a vital one gives it back to Carl Malone Carl Malone Killing Ruin Dara Keneally and here goes Kevin Herrer finding Carl Malone as Killing Ruin ships a strong tackle but manages to get away with it great interplay can Sean Moyne put it over but he doesn't need to because at the back post oh it's on the crossbar <laughs> and he put it wide oh lord it was like oh, this, that, that passage of play could be crucial 
It was like ping pong in there. Nobody can score. The insurance point over. Unfortunately, it does drift wide for this time. Point there would have taken the feet out of the equation. You know, if worse than this time, I would have been looking at extra time. It's their first of the second half. Was that a bit close, that kick out? No, says Wayne King. And it's Dunbeg that are on the attack. They're two points down. Dunbeg needs to get some bodies forward now on. Going by what? Wayne King indicated there's one minute to go. But anything is possible here is the first half show. And David Tuberley again lost it. This is a much more opportune one for Gullen Dillon. They're struggling with the ball. Ball breaks kindly for Keenan Mann. He's already got a point. Gives it back to Ender Doyle. Ender Doyle's experience, and that's a point. Came on as a substitute. He's after getting the point. And now, and now there's only a, a minute in it. Well, officially a minute on, but. Definitely. You know, referees' tendencies now, I'm sure Wayne will give Dunbeg a chance to draw. Who are you going for for a man of the match call? I'll give you a minute to talk, think about it, Derek. Go on, could you not wait for the results? <laughs> Seriously, though, look, I've been narrowed down to two. If his time will prevail, we'd have to give it to Killian Moran. Yeah. You know, he's seven points. If, if, if Dunbeg get through, there is no other option but David Tuggle. I'm sure his uh, cabinet is filled full of man of the match trophies, but this would be a sweet one if he was to force extra time here. And they're only a point behind, he's followed. He's surrounded by... Oh, 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 oh. He was surrounded by five in his time and looked to have his own bit of retribution there, but I'm not sure if, if Wayne King saw that. Paul Howard, though, seems to be uh, calling over Wayne King. So we're going to see what happens here. And Wayne King is coming over to Paul Howard to see what he's going to say. Could be a red card. He was striking, you know, he was striking. Him. Yeah. Now, I'm surprised he did not get a free. He was surrounded. Right, he's going to spot him to the ref. Yeah, we're going to see what comes out of this. Owen Conway has gone away from the scene of the crime. So, we'll see this. Oh, uh, he does spot him. Now, uh, what's he going to give? But more importantly. So that's a red one. So I was a bit man. I'd, I'd have a little, little red drawing red. It is, you're right. And Dubeg, after being twice down to 14 men during the, the contest, are now permanently down to 14. But for the moment, unless they can pull an equaliser, which would force extra time and mean that they would be back to 15. But look, that's all hyperbole. As it's Killian Rewine on the ball. If Ennis Simon can hold on to the ball, they're over the allotted three minutes of injury time. But there'll probably be a bit for that bit of treatment to Carl Malone. They need to hold on to the ball. Maddie Kinch. Back to David McNamara, who's just stepped back on the field after his own black card. Dumbeg are going to have to force this a bit. They're going to have to put the pressure on. Will it open up a gap in the back? And it's time and Aaron too concerned about going forward at this stage. And there is the final whistle. Ennis Diamond have held on. It was a, a stubborn resistance from Dumbeg, but Ennis Diamond managing to hold on and kill him central to that and I presume now you're going to give him the official man of the match yeah, seven points on I know I know six of them are from freeze but like I mean someone has to put him over and not only that he's work ethic and if you remember with ten minutes to go to Bigger on the attack the ball was in over the top and Sean Conway was preparing yeah. down and goal Kitty and Moran you could see the distance he made up I mean the work ethic was savage 50 yards in it in, got a tap in dispossessed him overturned possession as time went up the field overall a uh, terrific performance from Kitty and Moran in what was a thoroughly a slow start and slow burning game but really turned into a full blooded entertainment uh, you know championship game here great advertisement for club football absolutely and it, Adam Ralph I suppose also needs mentioning Kevin Eyre had a good game Dark and Ely you know among others uh, yes. to really shine for Ennis Diamond and that man David Tuberley was, the, was to the fore for, for Doombeg but as was Ty Glillis I thought you Ty Glillis is a superb game for Doombeg as well Warren, just to mention it absolutely but unfortunately we haven't all night to do the analysis so <laughs> we're going to have to wrap up here it's Ennis Diamond into the winner's pot it's Doombeg that faced that dreaded loser's bowl for the big draw but for the moment Ennis Diamond win on a scoreline of just a minimum 11 points to 10